Hello and welcome back to Power Electronics as we continue along with our DC to AC inverters. Uh, and this is a part one of a two part uh, video sequence. Uh, in the second part, we will look at a, uh, two different configurations for our PWM inverters. So let's go with an overview of this video. First, we're going to examine how to derive a PWM based inverter uh, using a sinusoidal reference signal and a sawtooth pulse signal. And the uh, form of PWM we're, we're going to discuss here and analyze is called trailing edge naturally sampled modulation. Then we're going to discuss the roles of the reference signal and the carrier signal, uh, also called the carrier generator. And for this example, it's going to be our sawtooth pulse. And then we're going to explore the impact of the frequency modulation index, M sub F, on the resulting power waveform, and then explore the amplitude modulation index, M sub A, on the resulting power waveform. And we'll see that uh, increasing M sub F will smooth out our, 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 our current uh, waveform, and uh, modulating the amplitude, or changing the amplitude index, will allow us to adjust the uh, amplitude on our current waveform. Here are a number of really excellent references as it pertains to PWM power converters and uh, I will provide uh, this information in the description below. Here's the uh, circuit schematic for a naturally sampled uh, PWM uh, inverter. And one of the things you'll notice is that M1 and M3 fire together or turn on together, and M2 and M4 will uh, also turn on together. The other thing to notice is that M1 and M4 are a complementary pair, and you'll see that we have complementary logic. And so M1 and M4 will not uh, be turned on at the same time. Uh, likewise, M2 and M3 will not be turned on at the same time. And the way the circuit works is we have a reference signal that we compare against a, a carrier signal. I'll call that a carrier signal. And our carrier signal is either going to be a sawtooth waveform or a triangular shaped waveform. When our reference signal is greater than our carrier, this top comparator goes high logic, which turns on M1 and M3, which, will, which would place a positive voltage across our load. And when our carrier exceeds the value of the voltage on our reference, this goes to zero and that goes to one, and we will turn on M2 and M4 and thereby reverse the polarity across our load and current will flow in the opposite direction. And that's the basic um, mode of operation for a naturally sampled um, PWM inverter. In this graph, we see our reference signal. And this, this reference signal is a 60 hertz sine wave uh, with a, a peak amplitude of 0.95 and we compare it against uh, our sawtooth waveform, which is called a trailing edge. And we can see here uh, to this point of our switching period that our, our reference is greater than our carrier and therefore M1 and M3 would be on. And in this period, uh, our, our carrier is greater than our reference. And so in this period, M2 and M4 would be activated Again, over here, M1 and M3. And uh, we keep adjusting the, the, the turn on time. Um, here again, we'll see that our, our carrier is greater than, our reference is greater than our carrier. So in this interval, M1 and M3 would be turned on, thereby alternating the voltage across our load and adjusting it based on the relative uh, value of our reference signal to our carrier signal. So here I've got the, the carrier signal and reference signal in the upper left-hand corner to show that what happens, again, I'll just look at this first portion of time where, uh, and in that portion of time right here, we see that our reference signal is greater than our 
carrier signal, and that means this would be a one, and so our current would be flowing through our load in this direction. And then in this portion of time from here to here, um, we see that our, our carrier signal is greater than our reference. That would force this to zero and this to one, and, and back and forth, back and forth. Here's the waveform across the load for that uh, previous uh, schematic and the reference signal in our sawtooth waveform. And here you can see the duty cycle changing as the reference signal fluctuates relative to our carrier signal. And when our carrier, when our reference signal uh, had a very high voltage, you can see our duty cycle through this period uh, takes up most uh, uh, as most positive. And then when our uh, reference signal was very low on the negative downswing, um, our duty cycle is very small uh, here. And if I would overlay our reference signal over that graph, and you can see that and how that changes the duty cycle uh, as a function of time. Now let's talk about uh, one of two, two indices. Uh, the first one's called the frequency modulation index, M sub F. M sub F is defined as the frequency of our carrier divided by our reference signal. And I'll, I'll title our reference signal F sub zero. Uh, in this example, F sub zero is equal to 60 Hertz. And uh, in this example, our carrier frequency is equal to 500, 540 hertz. And so our frequency modulation index is equal to 540 hertz divided by 60 hertz, which is equal to 9. And you'll see that we have 9 sawtooth waveforms within one of our reference cycles. The other index I'd like to talk about is called the amplitude modulation index. And M sub A is equal to our reference maximum value divided by our carrier maximum value. And here we see our carrier maximum value is one, and our reference maximum value is about 0.95. So for this example, MA is equal to 0 0.95. Um, I'm using volts, but it doesn't have to be if we're doing this in logic, divided by one. And so we have a amplitude modulation index for this example of about 0.95. Now let's look at how we can control the, the frequency modulation index and the amplitude modulation index to get different resulting waveforms uh, uh, out of the load. So in this, this example, uh, I've increased the uh, modulation frequency modulation index, and this is equal to 21. Um, and one of the ways we can do it is just count the number of sawtooths when in, within one cycle of our reference uh, cycle. And you'll see if you count them up, it's 21. And here we can see a little bit uh, how that changes our voltage across our load uh, for our H bridge. And oftentimes our loads on our inverters are inductive in nature. So it's not so much the voltage that uh, we want to think about, but it's the current through the load. So I sub L is going to equal V sub L, and I'm going to do it in magnitudes because we're going to have harmonic content. And so we want to look at the current through our load uh, as we change our, our frequency modulation index. And here we have our frequency modulation index for this example was 21. So here is the current through a, a, a load, and the load consists of a 25-ohm 
uh, resistance in series with an 80 millihenry inductance. Uh, we have our modulation frequency index of 21. We have an amplitude index of 0.95. We're using a 60 hertz sinusoidal reference signal. And we have our DC voltage of about 50 volts. And you can see that we have uh, our, our, our resulting current waveform through this load uh, is somewhat sinusoidal. It's not perfect, um, but, it, but it's okay. And uh, if I just did a quick uh, look at uh, 25 ohms and ignored the inductance, uh, 50 volts divided by 25 ohms is, uh, a, is equal to 2 amps. And we're, we're slightly less than 2 amps um, because the inductor is going to also uh, have some inductance at 60 hertz. Matter of fact, it has, I believe, 37 ohms of reactance at 60 hertz. You can do the math on that one um, to find that out. Now let's change the index uh, uh, modulation of frequency and we're going to increase it. And here we've increased it up to 180. Um, and we've left all the other parameters for this problem the same. And right there, you can see that the current through our series load across our H bridge has really smoothed out once we've used a higher um, index uh, of frequency modulation, uh, changing it from 21 to 180 has really smoothed out the waveform. And we'll talk about that in a future video of why that is. Now let's explore what happens when we change our amplitude modulation index. So here we have MA equal to 0.95. And here we have MA equal to 0 0.25. And I've normalized uh, our switching uh, voltages across our H bridge to fit on the same graph. Uh, so I normalized them close to one volt uh, peak. And you can see as we decrease our modulation index, the average duty cycle gets closer to one half and stays very close to one half. A matter of fact, if we let MA equal zero, the duty cycle on our switching voltage across our waveform would exactly equal one half because our reference signal would be above our carrier, our sawtooth carrier, half the time and below our sawtooth carrier half the time. Let's investigate that as we apply it to our load. And here we have, uh, we'll, we'll continue with our index of modulation for frequency at 180. We have our 60 hertz load. We still have uh, our 25 ohm and uh, 80 millihenry uh, series and uh, load across our H bridge. And we're switching back and forth at plus 50 volts and minus 50 volts across that load. And here is the resulting current. And we can see that that is about, oh, that's got about, about a 0.6 amp uh, peak value. And now let's change our uh, index of, of modulation for amplitude, our M sub A. Here we've increased it to 0.95 and we see we went up from 0.6 amps to about 1.2 amps or 1.25 amps by, by changing that. So we can control the amplitude of the current through our load by controlling M sub A. And the way we control M sub A is by controlling the amplitude on our reference signal. We can control this frequency by controlling the amplitude by controlling the frequency of our reference signal, we control the amplitude by controlling the amplitude on a reference signal. That's important because if I can control frequency and the amplitude of current through motor, I can control speed and torque uh, that that motor delivers. So let's uh, recap uh, the key points. And for this H bridge, it was called a trailing edge naturally sampled. And there are, um, uh, other types of PWM configurations, uh, but this is one of the easier ones to, to help with introduction to PWM inverters. 
And we compared a, a reference signal against a, a sawtooth pulse generator, and that's what we used to control the H-bridge. And we looked at two parameters. The first one was the uh, frequency modulation uh, index, uh, M sub F, and that smoothed out the current through our load by increasing it. And then we also looked at the uh, amplitude modulation index, M sub A, and that allowed us to change the amplitude of the current through the load uh, by, by modifying that as well. And we could control the uh, frequency of our uh, output current and the amplitude of our output current all by adjusting uh, our reference uh, uh, voltage. And that's very powerful. So uh, this was the first part. In the second part, uh, second part of this, we're going to look at using uh, uh, what's called three, three, three value or, or three amplitude PWM. And we're also going to look at using a triangular shaped wave for, for generating our carrier and comparing against that in the second video. So thanks for watching.